Home distillers, yes, you. This might be our very first all for one and one for all moment on this channel. At least I hope that's what it's gonna be if we can all help each other out. Welcome to Stiller everyone, I'm Jesse and this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. Today I want to talk to you about something that I would like to see happen, but to happen it's going to need everyone's help. Everyone's got to work together on this. And when I say all for one and one for all, I mean it. It's everyone, the whole community working together to help that one person, and that one person is helping the whole community back. I know you've read the title, you know this has something to do with malted barley. At the same time it is so much more than that. I'm going to get to the point and I'm going to tell you exactly what you personally can get out of this project. What each of us can personally get out of it. But the only way it's going to work is if we all work together. So I'm going to tell you first what you need to do to make this happen. Don't worry, this isn't bullshit internet marketing. I'm not going to ask you to go to Patreon, I'm not going to ask you to do donate, nothing like that. The reason I'm telling you what you need to do first is this only works if everyone gets on board and everyone helps out. And I want to make sure, before I put the effort into getting this all set up, that we can actually make it happen. The first thing you're going to need to do is choose a single base malt from a single manufacturer. Now don't go racing out to do this just yet. We'll talk more about which base malts you can choose later on in the video. Today I'm using Gladfield's Distillers Malt. Next, you'll accurately weigh out the malt in an attempt to hit 1.070 as a starting gravity. And you're going to finally mill it. If this stuff sounds daunting to you guys, don't worry. I'm going to be here to help you out if this project goes ahead. On that note, we've got a live stream coming up this weekend. Check the details in the description. I should have mentioned you need to be taking notes on everything. Everything. But you're going to mash at 65 degrees for an hour and a half before separating the liquid from the grist and boiling it gently. A simmer for 15 minutes. With the boil over, it's time to chill that wort back down to 25 degrees Celsius, which will be our pitching temperature, and transferring it into the fermenter. I know some of you probably won't want to hear this, but for this project, we're going to have to use pretty decent sanitary practice, and we're also going to need to hydrate the yeast. When the yeast is ready and the wash is at the correct pitching temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, we're going to pitch our yeast. Fermentation will be measured with a hydrometer, not an iometer, and definitely not a calendar. When it is fermented out, it's time to distill. Oh, I almost forgot, before we get into the distilling, probably not a bad idea to run a steam clean on the still at least. I would love to be able to specify the exact distillation technique that I want to use for this project, but unfortunately everyone has their own equipment, so you're just going to have to distill the whiskey the way that works for you, but make sure that you take really good notes on exactly what you've done and the details of the product that you're pulling off. Next you'll be making the cuts the way that you normally do with, once again, the addition of lots of notes. Now guys, if this is daunting for you and you feel like you're not ready for all grain or for any of this stuff, don't worry. When it comes time for this project, I will happily walk you guys through it. Before we get into talking about why I'm asking you to do this, I need to say a huge thank you to the Patreons. I have wanted to do this project for so long. I just never had the time. And the only reason I'm able to even contemplate it at the moment is that these people, these people right here are letting me do this full time, full time right now. So thank you, Patreons. Essentially, all I'm asking you to do is do what you do at home, right? To, to distill something, to make a product. But I'm asking you to exercise some constraint in terms of the practices and the ingredients you use and to do things in perhaps a way that don't necessarily make the best product. This whole collaboration isn't about making the best thing right now. That's not what it's about. It's about getting us information. If we are going to do it, we're going to need numbers. We need people to help us out and do this, and we need people to commit to the process and to commit to taking notes. Notes, people! Data! I think perhaps most of you have figured out what's going on here, but stay right there. I need to take you to the car. Ah, the mighty Honda Fit. <laughs> Let's have a look in the boots, people. 
grain. Yep, lots and lots of grain. Malted corn, peated malt, raw barley that's unmalted, shepherd's delight. Munich, there's biscuit down there, dark crystal. You get the idea guys, lots of grain, hold up. So we're not actually going anywhere. This is just where I store my grain now. <laughs> the car doesn't go anywhere anymore and I don't have any airtight containers left. We're starting to get rodents, we're going into autumn. So here we go. Hopefully I don't end up with a car full of rodents. Anyway, my point is guys, if you went to a homebrewing store, pretty much anywhere in the world, or went to a homebrewing page, you would get a write up on all of those malts, on the flavor contributions that they would give to a beer that you put them in. Why don't distillers get this? Why do we have to miss out? I don't know about you, but I've never found a great resource to let me know the flavors that are gonna carry over. I don't get it, I don't understand. It's just not something that is available to us. It's really freaking hot in here. Let's, uh, let's go back to the shed. <laughs> sure, we could use the same descriptions that the beer guys have and just assume that the same flavors in the beer will carry over into the whiskey that we're creating. But I don't know if I trust that. I don't think I believe that is true. I don't think that everything in beer is going to carry over. Case in point, the whiskey or whatever the hell it was I made from an APA. You can check that video out here. So sure, you could try them all yourself. You could ask friends. You could get in touch with professional distillers you know. Yes, you could do all of those things. But wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be so nice? to be able to go to one resource and find the flavor contributions that any base malt might add to a whiskey that you create. Ah, yes, but flavor is subjective, you say. And also, there are so many variables, so many variables between grain and a finished product that could mess this up. I 100% agree with you. That's why we need lots of people to do this. The more numbers we throw at this, the more accurate the average of those answers can be. If we can get, imagine if we could get a thousand people, a thousand people, 1,000 people <laughs> to try a 100% whatever, Maris Otter all grain whiskey, taste it, take notes on everything they did, and then we could accumulate that data and give the rest of the people, the rest of the community, an idea of the flavors that Maris Otter gives to a whiskey. How much easier, how, how much easier would that make making your own recipes at home? Seriously. I don't know about you guys, but I think this is freaking exciting. Here's the thing. It's gonna take me a whole lot of work to get this project off the ground. A whole lot of work. <laughs> So I want to know that it's something that people will enjoy, first of all. Would you like to be able to look this data up? And two, it's something that I want to know that you, as a member of this community, as the Trace the Craft community, and a member of the wider distilling community, or home distilling community, is it something that you would be happy to get involved with, to put some time into, to record some data, to take some tasting notes, and put them all into one set of data? If the answer to those questions are yes, you want the information and you want to get involved and do your part on the testing side of things, I need you to do two things. Number one, below this video, I need you to give it a thumbs up right now, please guys. Two reasons, one, I want this video to spike in the algorithm so people that normally watch the channel actually get to see this video. Don't, yeah, it's just how YouTube works. It sucks, but it's the way it is. And number two, I need you to go into the comments right now and leave a comment with your top three choices of base malt that you would like to see on this list. And I need you to put a producer, so the, the name of the company, um, Gladfields, and I need you to put the type of malt, distiller's malt, for example, or American Ale, or whatever it happens to be. The reason that I'm asking you to do that, guys, is we need to cut the list of potential candidates we're going to use down to start with. So maybe we only start with 10 possible malts that you can use. And the reason I say this is I've been talking to my professional maltster consultant, and Matt has essentially said that this is gonna be very hard to get meaningful data out of because every single malt is different from time to time, bag to bag, batch to batch, and definitely from producer to producer. So. We're not gonna be able to narrow it down to a certain batch, that's just not gonna happen. But we can at least narrow it down to a certain producer, right? I'll take all those suggestions, I'll pick the top ones that the most people are excited about, and we're gonna focus on those first. In the future, sure, we can open this up. Have you guys figured this out yet? Have you? If we can figure this model out, and we can get people on board, we can do anything. 
yeast, wood, fermentation temperature, pot distilling versus plate distilling, copper contacts, line arm length, condenser temperature, all of it. We could use the same model. Okay, calm down, Jesse. This is in no way going to be statistically meaningful. This is not going to be data that you could write a PhD on. There's no way, it's just not gonna work. But maybe, just maybe, it acts as a pilot study or even just inspiration for someone to go out and do a pilot study. All right guys, so I hope that you can see the benefit that this could have for you as a home distiller or as a commercial distiller. Please leave those comments on the grains that you wanna see. And if it looks like we're gonna have enough people to do this, I'm gonna to get to work on all the back end stuff to be able to collect the data from you guys. Cool? I've said my piece, I've put the idea out there. It's, I offer it up to you now to either nurture it and make it grow or uh, murder it in a back alley, I guess. I need to get out of here. I need to go edit this video so I can get it out for you tomorrow. This is actually the most nervous I've been about putting a video out in a long time. Anyway, I'm out of here. Regardless, keep on chasing the craft and I'll see you next time. See you guys.